nation without laws is said to have a date with anarchy. Now this explains why every government, an institution across the world, democratic or otherwise, seems to be guided by certain laws. Ahead of the 2023 general elections in Nigeria, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has released a 106-point guideline for the conduct of the elections, with electronic transmission of results coming into effect, certainly one of the high points. Now, what else is in INEC's rule book, and how might the guidelines influence outcome of the polls? We'll dig into this in a bit. Welcome to Nigeria Today. I am Victor Azu. Now joining me to speak on INEX 2023 election guidelines is Hamzat Lawal. Hamzat Lawal is the founder of Connected Development and head of mission at Uzabe, an independent international election observer. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good to see you, Victor. It's been a while. Yes, it has. This is the season, and um, INEC appears to uh, be way ahead of schedule by releasing the guidelines, 106 points, um, eight months before uh, the elections. So what is your assessment of this whole document? Um, so for me, as an independent observer, it's, it's exciting that INEC have released a document, one, instilling confidence to stakeholders, to stakeholders like civil society, the international community, um, the media, political parties and stakeholders, and, and of course security agencies. Because when I glanced through the guideline, I was really impressed uh, with the details on this guideline. And it also covering you know, when there's a pandemic, you know, they, they're really prepared that even if there's an outbreak of any future pandemic, you know, there are guidelines on how to undertake a free, fair, credible election. And, and with the introduction, mm -hmm. you know, of particularly around accreditation and voting, using beavers uh, and, and the role of, you know, electoral observers, polling unit agents, and the overall architecture of election management. I'm really uh, excited and impressed. But just to also state one disappointment I had with INEC, and I hope that they would put their feet on the ground and insist that this guideline sees the light of the day. You know, we had a meeting with the INEC chairman okay. when he had provided a guideline for political parties' primaries. Mm. We know there was pressure and counter pressure, particularly from polit politicians and the political party, to extend the deadline. Uh, that INEC had put in place. And in the last minute, INEC had said, oh, there's now a window of an additional seven days. And, and for, for me as a civil society leader and an election observer, I, I think that what really makes INEC independent is her putting her foot ground and standing her, her, her resolve that, see, you know, we would not leave any window for any, you know, extension. Because, you know, what, what the, the kind of signal... By the way, he had said earlier that... Um, he had refused yes. extensions earlier, yes. saying that, um, it, you know, it could affect some other things. Some other plans. And then he backtracked and, and still left that window. Because the signal you're sending is that, you know, if there's a lot of pressure, you can, shift you know, ground shift again. ground and be manipulated. And that's not a good signal that gives confidence, mm -hmm. particularly to the electorate and to INEX partner. Because civil society have continued to provide that necessary support, sensitization and publicity of the good work INEC is doing. So for me, that's one of my biggest worries. So now we have a guideline. Uh, I believe stakeholders would also uh, understand or read this guideline, digest it and populate it to their various followers, both political parties, civil society, engaging various stakeholders and the electorate on the ground and then the security agency. Because see, I, I, I'm focused and I'm stressing security because without security, there will be no law and order. Without security, 
you know, violence might erupt. Without security, mm -hmm. even INEC cannot undertake their constitutional mandate. So uh, security as we go into the 2023 election is really important. It is central to even we that were independent observers because I would have confidence to deploy over 10,000 foot soldiers if there's guarantee of life and property and safety. Mm -hmm. So security is really important. And uh, yes, I commend INEC, but I'm also calling on, you know, the needed investment for the security architecture to allow for free, fair, credible and transparent election. All right. Thank you for your opening shot. Um, timeliness is one thing. It's what we've talked about um, in part. How is this whole thing likely to impact conduct of the 2023 elections? I think when you look at time, um, as much as we would say, oh, we have about seven months into the election, but still there is no time because now as soon as all the political party finish their primaries and file their candidate, there's that window for campaign and you know campaign and outreach by politicians sharing their manifesto their vision and wooing electorates come the general election so but for me uh, as much as there's a bit of time but there's no time i'm confident in INEC to deliver on her mandate uh, but we must also understand and we must ensure that INEC is provided with the needed resources uh, because INEC and en INEC enjoy special budget uh, the chairman whatever the chairman presents to the committee. It's important that this is approved by the National Assembly and Mr. President is able to approve these resources and made, make it available to INEC in good time. Because election management... But, but I'm not sure, I'm sorry to quote you there, but I'm not sure that money has ever been a problem for well, money, INEC. Money was a problem in the lead up to the 2019 general election. Have you forgotten that INEC did not get money in good time? You know, okay, uh, in yes, good in good time. No, you see, that's because you mentioned time. So you must provide INEC with financial resources in good time because election mm -hmm. management, uh, you know, costs a lot of money and need, resources has to be provided so they can mobilize resources because mm -hmm. human capital resources is needed. There's going to be training, you know, various arm um, of the election management system. INEC also needs to conduct a lot of outreaches. I, I'm happy that, you know, INEC chairman had done outreach, you know, to Ekiti in preparation of the forthcoming uh, Ekiti governorship election. He, you know, the chairman needs to also travel as we go into the 2023 election and, and, and deploy necessary resources, both technology, and now technology is playing a big role. Indeed. So what it means is the INEC chairman would also work with technology stakeholders, different um, uh, you know, service providers to ensure that we have one, the infrastructural investment, two, there is short of downtime because we, when electronically results will be transmitted in real time. So it means that we cannot afford to have a lot of downtime. So it means that the necessary infrastructure, uh, ISP has to mobilize the necessary infrastructure, build uh, the, the tools because they're going to be different systems and tools and then you have to train people to man them and, and, and ensure that one you're able to brief security you're able to brief civil society you're able to brief political party you're the able media. to also, the media and also international observers so as much as we think that we have enough time there's not enough time so so uh, but I have confidence in INEX mandate to deliver on her uh, constitutional uh, 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 rules no 106 sounds like um, a whole lot. But one point um, that is likely to attract the attention of watchers, like you have said earlier, is the use of technology. Now, the you know, uh, electronic transmission of results is mandatory, as it is. The use of beavers is mandatory. So is that the game changer, as they say? Oh, yes, it is a game changer. See, when you look at our election from 1999 to date, mm. every election circle have been mad with judiciary's impute and where elections have been upturned and where even people who were, were declared losers, elections are now, you know, the, the tribunals and, and, and the judiciary have now made them winners or even cancelled elections. Mm. And this has cost INEC a lot of resources. This has also cost taxpayers a lot of resources because for every election cycle, you know, taxpayers' money are used. So technology is a game changer. One, it means that political party cannot muzzle their way into power. Even if you're a, a, a government 
in power. It means that you know, technology will provide an equal playing ground for everyone. You can see, before, during the 2015 and 2019 election, there was use of incident, you know, incident report. Yeah. You know, when the, the card readers are not working, then you fill incident form. And this is where corrupt politicians can work with corrupt INECT officials to, to then, you know, cause mayhem, I would say, for, for this chain. Because, and, and if you're not using technology, it means that even during coalition, because we've seen most of the cases in court is, you know, during coalition or when results are saying something different from what the election result is saying at the polling unit. Because in every polling unit, they declare results and then the, the agent would sign the election, the, the result sheet, before it's now moved to coalition center. Sometimes result does not even get to coalition sector successfully. Sometimes hoodlums would attack INEC officials. Even in some cases, we lost lives of security agencies and an INEC official, you know, transporting result to coalition center. So with technology, what it means is, as you're casting your, 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 your vote or your ballot, it automatically transmits using beavers and the technology to the situation room in INEC. And what this also means is, hopefully, Aftermath of the 2023 general election, there will be not enough court cases where elections will be upturned. And, and, and you know, most of these cases found their way to the Supreme Court, you know, using taxpayers' money, you know, to, to, to fight, you know, endless court cases. And, and lastly, they will be more confident, you know, to, I, I believe this would also help reduce voter appetite. Because over the years, people would say, oh, you know, when the elections are not free and fair, you know, when, when, when the vote does not count. No, with technology, you know, it is one plus one. It is clear. There's nothing like, oh, you're seeing white uh, and this is, you're, you're seeing black, but they're calling it white. No, with technology, no, it is free when, and fair. when there is adequate security, because the machine can only do its job if it's available. No, no, no. So I know that INEC have already undertook, you know, the procurement of these machines. Mind you, they've also tested the beavers, and they'll still use but it. the beavers didn't quite cover itself in glory in Anambra. There were some shortfalls. And this is, that's why I say with this time, there's a window where INEC has lent, where they can also work on those, you know, those shortfalls and those gaps and, and prepare. Because, see, 2023, it, you know, we have over 160, uh, 150,000 polling points. So, so it means that INEC cannot afford to fail. And they are taking steps and lessons and building more capacity, you know, working more on the system and upgrading the system, both the hardware and the software, to meet the test of time and to be that game changer that builds confidence of the electorate and ensure that we have a transparent system that would curb voter apathy. Now, what are the other high points of this document that you have identified? Um, technology is a big one, of course. I know we can talk about technology the whole of the program, but what are the other high points? Uh, so for me, the, the other high point is also the role of political party and their party agents, how they must not interfere with the electoral process, and how when there is any issue, they would call the attention of the INEC official on ground, uh, you know, to, to, to address them. Uh, another one also, because it clearly states the role of independent observer, uh, you know, before we came on it, I said, oh, in this guideline, there's no role of the media. And, and you know, we, we understand that, yes, the media as, you know, the third arm of, of and the independent arm of the voices of people, mm. you know, shouldn't have or shouldn't be directed on how they should engage. But I believe How's that... How is that um, a given, um, that the media will just do its thing? You know, but I believe also that with this guideline, it would help also inform how civil society, how political party, and even INEC, because over the years, we've also invested heavily in building the capacity of the media to understanding their role uh, in Nigeria's development. And the, the election itself is one of the key pillars of our democracy, because that's the system that brings in place government. And that's a system that provides equity and justice in the eyes of the law. So I believe that maybe INEC should also engage the media and provide them with a clear guideline on understanding on what is expected of them. Providing right. a guideline does not mean you're actually controlling the media. But you're also, because 
it doesn't also mean that INEC is well, trying to control, you know, independent observer, but there should be a clear understanding of, of what is, of what is expected. Because mind you also, this is a season of fake news, misinformation and disinformation. And this is one of, you know, the ill of election. Because fake news, you know, strive during election. And we've seen it already, you know, where fake news is taking precedence. So it's important that INEC is able to work with the media to counter fake okay. news, misinformation and disinformation. I, I, I do know that INEC has been engaging the media yes. and it's something that um, they will continue to do till the elections, or even after the elections. But this is uh, Nigeria today and uh, we've been discussing INEC's uh, guidelines for the 2023 general elections. Let's pause for a break now. When we return, there's so much more to talk about. You don't want to miss it. This is NTA News 24 broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime on the following platforms. Start times, channel 101, Greek TV, channel 703, GS TV, channel 419, TV channel 46. For more information, log on to our website www.nta.ng or join us on our social media handles Facebook at NTA News24. For comments, suggestions, and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nta.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers NTA, NTA News24. News, news and more news. Right, uh, this is Nigeria Today, and uh, we have been discussing the 2023 guidelines just uh, released by INEC for the 2023 general elections, in case you've just joined us. My guest is uh, Hamzat Lawal of uh, Connected Development, founder of Connected Development, and um, who belongs to the civil society, and uh, he's the chief of mission. Is the chief of mission now? Yes. Of Yuzabe. Uh, an independent international election monitor. Hamzat, one of the other things I spotted in the guidelines is um, ban on the use of phones at the polling booths. What's your take on this? So this is a big controversial in the sense that um, the use of phone is a fundamental right of every individual. Uh, and I can understand where INEC is coming from. And, and other analysts and my colleagues would argue that, you know, you subjecting someone not to use their phone is infringing on their right. But we also know that there is a pandemic we're dealing with, which is the issue of transaction during election, which is the issue of vote buying and vote selling. We've seen some cases where corrupt politicians would tell electorates, you know, to snap, you know, who they vote for and come and meet them in a corner and collect money and make made it transactional and i can understand why INEC is insisting in their guideline that there will be no use of mobile phone and i want to use this opportunity to appeal to electorates and people who are watching that INEC saying do not use your phone for less than one minute uh, uh it's it's one uh comfort that you should please just accept you know one minute out of uh you know 24 hours would not would not uh, 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 make you lose anything. Mm -hmm. And this is also for the betterment of society, where corrupt politicians cannot influence you know, the system and, and take away your own fundamental civic duty or control your... Fun because voting is a, a fundamental civic duty. But if politicians are asking you to take money and provide evidence to take money, then they're trying to control your fundamental civic duty, control you know, your decision to independently select who you believe to lead you. So I'm using this opportunity to appeal to electorates and, and the voters out there, please, if INEC, because we, for INEC to succeed, we must support INEC. And I totally understand. Because see, they've been a big burden on the anti-corruption agents. Mm -hmm. Because they've, we've provided evidence, even Yuzabe have provided evidence in the 2019 general elections, where we have, you know, you know, gathered evidence of vote buying of vote and vote selling transaction during election submitted this evidence and and nothing really happened so i can understand why INEC is trying and this is putting in place measures to curtail transaction during election and and please i appeal you know to people watching and to tell their groups and tell their families 
in just less than two minutes. Put your mobile phone in your pocket, you know, after you, particularly after you collect your ballot uh, uh, paper. And, and as you walk to the, to the uh, because it's secret voting, as you walk to the, uh, the booth, the, 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 the boots, and as you, you know, thumbprint on the ballot paper, keep your phone away from you. Put it in your pocket. As soon as you put your ballot paper in the box, then you can remove your phone, you know, and continue using it. Because, again, this is a... We're in a society where citizens are also journalists and they want to cover and capture everything that's happening. But within two minutes, I believe you will not you know, miss anything as you collect your ballot paper and, and transmit to the ballot books to the Great. books. Now, we've talked about briefly, we've talked about thuggery and uh, ballot snatching and all other anomalies that um, we've come to see in Nigeria's elections. But there is another. This system seems to heavily rely on trust for the humans that will operate the machines and manage the process. It's not enough to have technology. Technology will be operated by humans. And do we have, can we invest that much trust in those who will manage the process? Bear in mind, this is not going to be all INX staff. You're going to bring in a lot of ad hoc. This is a factor. What do you think? I think that INEC over the years have a very robust understanding with the NYC, that's the Nigerian Youth Service Corps. And usually, you know, INEC deploy or INEC enjoy deployation of ad hoc staff via the NYC. And, and they've invested heavily in providing them with human capital, investing in, you know, training and retraining. For me, this system is like a blockchain. It's a system you cannot manipulate easily. It's a system that have very high level of security architecture where, and, 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 and you know, like you said, you talked about, you know, ballot box snatching and, and attack you know, you know, hoodlums it's attacking like officials. officials. This is technology. You know, the you know, yes, uh, with computers, there's antivirus, there's malware. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but but I believe that, and hacking I know us. hacking. I, I believe you know, and I know that this technology is also a blockchain technology mm -hmm. where there will be less interference of any external party. And INEC has continued to provide, you know, updates to civil society and other stakeholders, building our confidence and sharing with us what they're doing. So, so for me, yes, I know that Technology is just a tool, but human must man that tool. And sometimes human use technology negatively or positively. But I'm happy that one, INEC is embracing technology. Two, other stakeholders understand that with technology, you're, you're removing many factors that would negatively impact the electoral management system. So, mm -hmm. I, and I believe that, you know, with the amount of investment and the amount of human capital development, because I know that my colleagues are also in touch with the director of ICT. We've engaged him. The chairman have brought him to so many of our engagements to make presentation and we've engaged and asked so many questions around how would this result be transmitted? What are the technology backbone? What are the security, the, the, the infrastructural security architecture and yes lives. and yes you know providing that firewall mm -hmm. where nobody can penetrate and we're confident in the feedback we've gotten from mine yeah, all right oh, i'm running out of time but i can't go without talking about this and i'm sure this will delight um you and your colleagues in the civil society pwds um pregnant women visibly pregnant women in excess uh, nursing mothers and the elderly will be granted priority attention priority access well, I thought um, the coverage would be more than that. Perhaps those who are sick who want to exercise their franchise and all of that. But this must delight you. Yes, this is progress because civil society it's have made... Been there. Yes, we've always made a, a, a very strong uh, call for INEC to ensure that one, for people who are visually impre you, you know, impaired, you know, they have, uh, uh, you know, they have tools that would avail them to ensure they can uh, vote. I'm really, we're really excited about, you know, this, this, you know, embracement of INEC. And this is also, you know, this is also a message to political parties and other political stakeholders that 
if INEC is doing this, it shows that our society is changing and recognizing the role of uh, the role of elder statesmen, like I call them, which are older people, because you and I would get yeah. old someday, and you know, pregnant women and other people who are living with challenges, you know. So, so this is really exciting, and I must commend INEC, and I hope the political party and our political leaders would embrace and understand that all of these people have a role in our democracy. All right, I also join you in commending on behalf of the media. INEC for finding a space for the PWDs and all the others who uh, need this concession to be able to perform their civic uh, duty. duty. Why they look into continual voters? Oh, because right. let's not make it ceremonial. Let it be continual, you know, beyond the election so that as you turn 18, you go and get registered, you collect your permanent voters card and you prepare for, you know. Okay, comes up Lawal founder, connected development, and head of mission at Yuzabe, an independent international election observer. Thank you for being part of the program, and indeed, thank you for your perspectives. Victor, thank you so much. All right, Nigeria Today is live every weekday at half past seven in the evening. Or you can watch this and other episodes at www.youtube.com forward slash ntanews24.com. I am Victor Azul. I thank you for watching.